Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm bringing you a very raw and realistic video where I'm going to take you along while we go through Gap's intro. So a couple of things to know, this is not our first time through intro, it's my third or fourth time, it'll be my son's fourth or fifth time, and so a person's first time usually looks quite different from their subsequent times through. So just keep that in mind. What you're going to see us do is not typical of someone's first time through GAPS intro, especially when it comes to the timing, the time spent on each stage, those kind of things. They are so individual. So it's very individual for each individual person. And so yes, just want to put that kind of disclaimer out there in case you uh, wanted were wondering about that. So first of all, I want to just talk through some things that I do whenever I think about doing intro, just that I have in place and have ready to go. So the first thing that I did when I thought about starting is to just quickly take stock of what food I have, what kind of fresh perishable things that are not on gaps or are later gaps that I want to have used up so that we don't have a bunch of things uh, sitting around that are not going to be used. So the first few days before I make sure that we have our like sourdough crackers or like fresh fruit and different things like that that are not on gaps um, out and include those and get those done. And then I planned what kind of things I need to fill in. So you need a lot of meat stock in the beginning. You need meaty bones for that. And so I ran to the store. I stucked up on onions, uh, carrots, celery, celery for flavor on the gaps intro, right? We, it's way too fibrous to actually eat, but it's wonderful for flavor. So I always include it. Garlic, ginger root, uh, meaty bones, um, making sure that I have a bunch of butter for ghee, some cultured cream, a bunch of sauerkraut brine. I bought also some cauliflower, broccoli, beets. So we have our raw milk back here for making kefir. I bought some extra cream because we wanted that. These are gonna be used up before we start. And then we have, um, this is butter, so cultured grass-fed butter, lots of that for ghee. We have carrots, celery, there's broccoli and cauliflower and some beets here. We have avocados for a little bit later. Yeah, so those are some things. Oh, and then um, we have whole chickens that we grow, but I also wanted to fill in with some just thighs and things like that to help with having lots of meat stock and so I grabbed some of those as well. Also, just a couple things I wanted to show real quick that I have already on hand uh, before starting, that if you're starting for the first time, you'd wanna make these beforehand and have them ready to go. So I have sauerkraut brine. It's in there, in here. This is actually Dr. Natasha's vegetable medley. So both really good sources of liquid probiotic food for adding to the meat stock and soups. Um, and then I also have some whey right there that I dripped from homemade kefir already. I also have cultured cream back in this one, some kefir, and I'll continue to make those as we go. Um, this is beet kvass right here. So just showing you some things that I have ready to go ahead of time because once it's time to start, you have to have those on hand and ready to go. I have a few resources that I've created for helping with doing gaps that I offer for free. And one of them is this Gaps Intro Stages printable. It's actually in color when I designed it, but my printer just does black and white. But I'll have this down below in the description box if you'd like to grab a copy for yourself. It is just a really handy little refrigerator sign that you can print out, stick somewhere in your kitchen, and then just glance at to just remember, okay, what are we including on each intro stage? I also have other things like an ebook that's all about getting started on Gaps. It's for free. And then I also have other things like meal plans, coaching package, membership, things like that. And all that information will be down the, in the description box. I've got some un bunch of extra onions, some garlic, and some ginger root, a bunch of ginger root, fresh ginger root. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is getting some meat stock. So like a basic chicken soup meat stock going so that I have our first meal. This will provide meat, meat stock, and some cooked vegetables. And then I'll just bring you along as we go from there.
One really important thing when you're making meat stock is the ratio of water to meaty bones. So the ratio is one quart of water for every one pound of meaty bones. So I have two and a half pounds of bone in skin on chicken thighs here. So I have two and a half quarts of filtered water here. So then I'm just adding the rest of the ingredients. I'm gonna do carrots, onions, celery for flavor. I'll add garlic at the end of the cook time and then some peppercorns inside some little tea strainers. I'll show you that. Makes it really easy to be able to take them out and not have to eat around them. And then my nice Baja gold mineral salt. So here it is all put together, got everything in there. I'm bringing it up to a boil and then I'm just going to reduce it down to a nice simmer where the bottom is moving but the top is not as much as possible. And then just keep it at a simmer for about two hours total. So this is not what we're eating today. We're not starting today, we're starting tomorrow. Tomorrow will be day one and this is the first thing that we're going to eat tomorrow. For the amount of salt that I add, I just add to taste. Since I've been doing this for a while, you could start with like a tablespoon might be a good place to start. And then I always like to taste it afterwards and then just add more salt right before eating it. The celery again is just for flavor. It's not something that you eat on early GAPS intro. For the carrots, if somebody's doing GAPS intro who's having trouble with um, diarrhea, then you would wanna make sure that you're peeling the carrots. So that's not something that any of us are dealing with. So I just kept the peels on the carrots. But anytime anybody has that type of concern, you wanna make sure you peel everything, especially in the beginning. Just gonna add a lid as it starts and then I'll show you the next step. So here's a really good example of a really nice ideal simmer. So you can see that it is not really moving much at the top, but underneath you can see some bubbles rising and everything. And then on the left, this gray stuff is something that I always try to work with as well. So I have this skimmer and that's just scum. That gray stuff is just scum. And so it's the bones cleaning themselves. And so it's nice to go ahead and just remove that. So I'll just go in there and grab that. You can also use a, a spoon or like a fine mesh strainer or something like that. And then you just grab that and get rid of it. All right, so letting this simmer for one and a half to two hours, and then it will be ready to either eat, or in my case, I'm gonna store it because we're gonna eat it tomorrow morning. Okay, now here it is, the end of the cook time. What I'm going to do next is I'm gonna press some garlic cloves and add those. Now, this doesn't work for everybody. Sometimes people need to have the garlic in there for the whole cook time, and then later on they can add the garlic towards the end like that, so it just kind of depends. But when possible, this is really nice because it preserves more of those properties from the fresh pressed garlic cloves by adding them at the end, so that's what I like to do. Also, another thing I did today, um, we won't need this until stage two, but I went ahead and made some ghee, got that going. I have some more cultured cream going on the counter, so just some things that I have going. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the garlic cloves. I'm going to crush those in a garlic press, add that, and then I'm going to store this in some big half gallon jars. So now I have one jar that is the soup just whole, so the broth or meat stock with the chicken and carrots and onions in it. And then I did another one that's just meat stock strained out, although one carrot jumped in, and then some extra meat and cooked carrots here. So tomorrow morning, what we'll most likely do is heat up this jar on the right to have the full chicken soup meal with the meat stock, cooked chicken, and carrots and onions in it. And then if people want any extra meat or carrots or both, then we can add to it from this jar. And then this jar we will use for drinking meat stock in between meals, as well as making other soups with vegetables, like I plan to make a blended vegetable soup tomorrow. 
So we are ready to go for tomorrow morning and then we'll just keep making food tomorrow and I'll bring you along and show you. Here is one more thing that I just wanted to include in my sort of prep work for this and that is that I took some coconut oil and some raw local honey and I whipped it together with a hand mixer and then I put it in a little piping bag and tried as best as I could to pipe little stars or rosettes on some parchment paper and it's July here right now and my coconut oil is very soft and if I would have like chilled it and got it a little more firm I could have got better looking little stars and things like that but I didn't want to be here all night so I'm gonna put these into the freezer and they will break apart easily once they're nice and solid but we're gonna keep these in the freezer and these come in handy for a few different things we can use them as little motivations in case kids need a little motivation to finish up their soup or meat stock because they're like a nice little sweet treat and then since they have so much fat in them Dr. Natasha actually talks about whipping coconut oil and honey or ghee and honey or later on butter and honey and using that as a blood sugar stabilizing tool because especially on the very early stages of GAPS or anybody who's new to GAPS going without the carbs and things that you may have used to be having can bring about some blood sugar issues and having a nice little boost like this that has fat and honey in it can just really help to stabilize that blood sugar it gets rid of sugar and carb cravings just in an instant so it's a really really helpful tool dr natasha talks about keeping something like this on hand for whenever those sugar or carb cravings hit eat one of these and then you'll be good to go so anyway i'm going to stick these in the freezer later on after we've introduced ghee i'll make them with ghee and then later on i'll make them with butter and they're they're actually very tasty especially when they come right out of the, out of the freezer they're kind of like a little after dinner mints Okay, so this is day one, so I'm just gonna be heating up the chicken soup that I made yesterday that you saw, and then we're gonna be adding a little bit of sauerkraut brine to it and eating it that way. One thing that's interesting to me, as you can see when I poured it in, it's not as gelatinous as I usually like it. Usually I like it to be like solid when it's cold, but that's okay. It still has benefits, we're still gonna have it. And I will show you a more ideal gelatinous jelly texture for meat stock in upcoming batches. Um, sometimes it can still just happen that way, even if you're following the correct ratios. So I don't worry about it, I just keep on. You can see that in this jar that had just the chicken pieces and carrots in it without a bunch of meat stock or the meat stock is more concentrated it is a jelly consistency so yeah it's just a little bit more diluted i guess is all and sometimes that happens with the ratio but that's okay still beneficial and then as far as these bigger pieces of skin and the fat and the soft connective tissue and everything we like to try i like to try to encourage people to eat some of that along with the chicken when they're eating it but for the really big pieces, we'll save those and put those aside. And I'm going to put them into a blender with some meat stock, blend it all up, and then add that back to some meat stock that I'm going to be using to make some soup later. It's important to make sure that the soup or the meat stock is cool enough before you add the liquid probiotic food or the sauerkraut brine to it. So that's why I just make sure. And then for really little kids, what oftentimes works best is to do like deconstructed soup. So I'm going to be putting his meat stock in here for him with the sauerkraut brine. And then he is going to be having just some chicken and carrots on a plate.
The next thing I'm going to do is to grate some of this ginger and make some ginger tea that we'll enjoy with a little bit of raw honey. So I have cauliflower, onion, and then just poured meat stock over it. So I'm gonna bring that up to a boil, then reduce it to a simmer, and just cook until the vegetables are nice and soft. Then I'm gonna use my stick blender, my immersion blender, to blend it all up nice and smooth, and then we will serve it and enjoy it. Here's the ginger tea, just bringing that up to a boil, and then I'm gonna turn the heat off and let it sit for a little bit, and then um, this has a strainer inside that holds the grated ginger and then you can just pour the strained tea out there stir in a little bit of our raw local honey and enjoy that one thing you may have noticed is i did not wash this pot in between making the meat stock heating up the soup again this morning and then making this soup now and that's up to you but for me personally i know that nothing bad happens if i use a pot a number of times for meat stock and things like that without washing it. And so I know that when you're first starting gaps, especially intro and you're doing lots and lots of cooking in the beginning, dishes can quickly get out of hand. So this is one trick that I have is don't wash stuff that doesn't need to be washed. Just same goes for like this ladle, spoons that you use for serving and mixing, just rinse and stick them in the sink or just leave these things on the stove and it works out just fine. Way less work, way more doable. So here's what I was talking about before when I said that we save the big pieces of skin and soft connective tissue and cartilage and things like that. So we have those there, some meat stock here in the blender, and I'm gonna add those to the blender and just blend it up really, really smooth and then add it to our soup here. And then this is extra meat and carrots that I pulled out of that first batch of soup that we made so that people can have extra meat to eat. So this is lard for extra fat. Okay, so now it's afternoon. We have a load of dishes going in there. Excuse that towel, I need to switch out that hand towel hanging there. Normally these days we pretty much always get by with just one dishwasher load of dishes, but today we're doing two just because getting started does uh, take some extra dishes. So that's just the way it is. And as you get going and you get your refrigerator and freezer stocked up with some more things, then you're not doing as many dishes. But for the first little bit there, there's just some extra dishes. And I pulled this these uh, jars of meat stock out of the freezer. I wasn't originally going to use them, but I decided to go ahead and do it just for sake of time today. We have a lot going on. Well, not a ton, but we have some different places that we need to be that we need to plan around. So I want to be able to make, um, I have this ground beef out thawing here in some water in the sink, and I'm going to make some meatball soup later on. And so I wanted some meat stock to be able to use with that at the same time at the right time rather and so i am getting ready which i'm going to show you in a second to make another big batch of meat stock so on a more relaxed day i probably wouldn't use this and i would just 
make the meat stock, make the meatballs after that meat stock was done and everything would be good to go. But I did pull this out. The reason why I wasn't going to use it right away is because this is another one where it's not so much of a wonderful gelatinous texture. It's just a little bit more liquid. Um, it's still viscous. It still has great benefits, uh, but it'll still be good. So I'm going to use it. And as I'm making the soup, it will cook off some and it will become more concentrated. So that is another thing. If the meat stock turned out less uh, solid in, in their fridge than you like it, then you can cook it down. You can boil some of that water off and make it more concentrated. And then it will be the nice gelatinous texture like we love to see. So speaking of that, the next thing that I'm going to do actually is put together a big batch of meat stock. So I want to have a bunch of meat stock on hand so that I can make more vegetable soups and different things like that. And so for this batch, I'm going to be doing pork. So I have um, these things that make wonderful, super gelatinous meat stock full of all that collagen and everything that we love. So I have a couple of pig feet. I have some pork neck bones a couple pig tails and then some hawks. So I'm going to put all these together in my biggest stock pot that I have. It's a little over eight pounds of meaty bones altogether. So I'm going to be adding eight quarts of water. I'll be adding some onion, celery and carrot for flavor, um, some mineral salt, peppercorns in the little tea strainers again, and then I'll add garlic at the end. So this batch, there's going to be a little bit of meat that comes off of the neck bones and then the hocks as well. Um, it's not going to be as meat heavy as a batch of meat stock as some of them are. So like when you use a whole chicken or something like that, you end up with, with a lot of meat. This one is mostly going to give a more, it's going to be like a low meat meat stock. And I just like having some of that on hand because then I can have some, some flexibility, have more of it on hand to drink in between meals, make my vegetable soups and things like that. So you can make these GAPS intro meals uh, more meat heavy or you can make them more plant heavy, just depending on what your body is wanting and what you're feeling good with. So s different members of my family are different. I usually tend to like a little bit more vegetable heavy. My husband and my kids, especially my two youngest kids, are big meat eaters and so they love the meals to be a lot more meat heavy. So you can absolutely tweak it and I'm just going to keep on showing you what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and put this batch of meat stock together. Same directions as before, except for the cook time is a little bit longer for pork, beef, game, lamb, anything like that. The cook time is four to six hours. Okay, so here it is ready to start cooking. We're just going to bring it up to a boil, then bring it down to a simmer like before. Um, so since this one is more just meat stock without being like a meal that we're going to eat, like the chicken one that I made before, I kept the pieces of vegetables really big. So then we can choose to eat the carrots if we want to, cut them up, um, or we can just pull them out, leave them in there for flavor alone. Either way, there will be some pork meat, like I said, so we can make this somewhat of a meal, but I'm planning on mostly just getting meat stock from this. And also, I wasn't able to fit eight quarts of water in here, so it's actually going to be even more concentrated. So not only do these cuts of pork yield really, really gelatinous meat stock anyway, it's going to be actually concentrated as far as the ratio of water to meaty bones. So it's going to be really thick. This is going to be like jello on a plate. And so you can see that, um, you know, everything evens out. If you've got a batch of meat stock here and there that was thinner than you wanted it to be, and then you make another one that's really, really gelatinous, it just, it all evens out. And so we just keep trying to make things gelatinous in the long run. And I also want to say, normally my chicken meat stock is nice and gelatinous. It's just when I choose to pull out the phone and document it, then all of a sudden I get, right, two batches, the one that I made yesterday, and then this one that I told you I, I pulled out of the freezer are just happen to be thinner consistency ones. And so, you know, it's just the way it is. You pull out the phone and start documenting and and that's what happens. But most of the time I'm able to get it nice and gelatinous. So I'm going to show you, I'm really excited to show you what this one looks like with the pig feet and tails and everything in it because it makes the best. So I will be back when I'm going to show you the next step in this whole process.
So this is a meatball soup similar to the one that Dr. Natasha has in her recipe section of her GAPS books. And it's just simplified to be for early intro. So there's meat stock that I put in there, some chicken meat stock, made little balls of ground beef for meatballs. I put in some chopped garlic, chopped onion, and then peeled and de-seeded zucchini. And we're just going to make sure the meatballs are cooked through that the zucchini is cooked nice and soft and then we'll go ahead and serve that add our liquid probiotic food and extra fat as needed and enjoy it and they are having some cultured cream with kefir culture with a little raw honey at the end of the day today Okay, so that is where I'm gonna cut this off and make this into a two-part series. So make sure to follow along and stay tuned for when part two of this series comes out. And in the meantime, be sure and check out the description box for links to different things that I've mentioned, like my meal plans that I have for the GAPS diet, how you can work with me as a certified GAPS coach, all those great things. And if you did like this video and are interested in seeing more like it, please give it a thumbs up share it with anybody else that you think would be interested in it and hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.